This is the diary of Cassandra Hack. This diary should be full of teenage girl thoughts, diatribes about backstabbing friends, little notes concerning my waning interest in my chemical romance and finding love with old Nirvana records, vivid descriptions of what I wish Jeff Fry from fourth period study hall would do to me on the couch when mom and dad aren't home. But I can't think about those things. Not now. Maybe never again. There are so many other things running through my head on a loop. Obsessive, constant. Louder and louder and louder. The gun is a lot heavier than you think it's going to be. I'm in that kitchen at my school. Not my first school. The all-girls school they put me in after my mom killed anyone who bullied me then served them as lunch. And I'm feeling deja vu. Because the kitchen is where my mom's story ended the first time. But it didn't end. It started again and she followed me here. She grabbed some girls, Anne Marie Saint, Stephanie Gray. She gutted them and hung them in the freezer. And, and this girl, this girl whose name I can't remember because all I can think of is the smell of the gunshots and the weight of the gun and how I'm looking at my mom dead on the floor. But she can't be dead because she's already dead. Over and over, you killed your mother. You don't even have a dad. You don't have enough parents to go around wasting them like this. I'm not thinking about the way my mom smelled like burnt hair and dirt, about how her voice sounded. It wasn't the sweet syrupy tone with a hint of a Southern accent she always had, even when she was sticking her head into a pot of boiling gravy to avoid being arrested. It was oppressive and harsh, like the sound in your head before a panic attack. I'm thinking about how I just put two bullets into the face of the woman who used to kiss my forehead before I went to sleep. I'm thinking about how I'm a killer just like she was. Or how maybe right now I could kill anyone, everyone in the world. I'm thinking about the weight of that gun and the way it kicked. And whether Sue Ellen Myers, that's her name, will ever know it was me who saved her life. No, it was me who endangered it by coming to her school and bringing my mother's anger down on her little blonde head. I'm not thinking about the fact that this woman who I watched die shouldn't be out of the ground because that makes no sense. I'm just feeling guilty and horrible. Like I betrayed her after she cooked me all those meals, bought me that Barbie, hugged me when my dad left for cigarettes and never came back. I'm thinking about how I have to get her home. I owe her at least that. And right now, home is a hole in the ground. And then for a second, the shock and the fear and the anger wear off. And I'm jealous because my mom is going home. And that's something I will never do again. This is not home. Cassie, time for school. This is the home of Shannon and Karen Moore, my foster parents. Karen talks fast and runs short words into one big word and makes really good meatloaf. She's nice and good and does everything she can do to help. I hate her. Karen, did you uh, wash my other uniform? Are you sure? Still warm from the dryer, I bet. Let me get it for you. She sleeps soundly, earplugs in her ears so she doesn't hear Shannon snore. Thanks. She didn't hear me come in at four. Just like I said. I hate her because she acts as if she's my mother, but she's not my mother. For a second, I wonder what life would have been like if Karen had been my mom, instead of Delilah Hack, who never got over her husband leaving her who did everything she could to keep her daughter safe from the evils of the world. Safe from everything except her. Morning, Gas. You look kinda... tired. Shannon Moore is already afraid of me. Not of what I really am. He fears the fact that I'm a teenage girl. A mortal arch enemy destined to spurn his rules and squeal about things he couldn't possibly fathom. Hmm, I just could not stop reading about Edward and Bella. OMG, what a romance. It keeps him from trying to act like my father. I like it that way. I don't wonder what it'd be like if Shannon Moore was my dad instead of Jack Hack. I just wonder how afraid of me he'd be if he knew I spent the previous night throwing wet dirt onto a corpse, watching worms fall out of the grave walls onto the body. As soon as I step foot onto school grounds, I hear the buzzing. They found Sue Ellen Myers this morning. Yeah, in one piece, and in the cafeteria of all places. She's alive. 
I wanted her spot on the cheer squad, like what a downer. No one knows who kidnapped her, or that I had anything to do with her rescue. But they look at me accusingly anyway. I'm the new girl, the one who lives with foster parents and has glasses that were out of fashion five years ago. Even the teachers can tell something's wrong. Their heightened senses so attuned to teenagers warn them to keep me in their sights, not to turn their backs. All day I feel the stairs, so much that after a while I feel like I'm outside my own body, staring right along with them, accusing myself. It's not until my elective gym class gets period that I come back to my own body. Here, my body is a vessel, a blunt object, an untouchable spiny shell. In the showers, my armor is off and I'm on display. Bruises I didn't feel last night, high on fear and adrenaline, boiled to the surface. Here, girls blessed with beautiful bodies and perfect skin cast barbed remarks to those less perfect, the weaker. They don't waste words on me. It's not weakness they sense from me. It's an otherness, a wrongness. You almost can't blame them for what they're about to do. They say the usual things, cunt, bitch, slut, but it's not the words. It's the way girls say things that make them weapons. But they also say they know I have something to do with the disappearance of Anne-Marie Saint and Stephanie Gray. They know it, they just can't prove it. And so they resort to weapons other than words. I could fight back, become a blunt object, but I might kill them. I deserve this. I'm in a daze, dried up and depleted like the earthworms that didn't make it back into the ground before the sun cooked them. The new bruises don't hold off their debut like the ones from last night. And the dull buzz in my head makes everything seem like I'm remembering it from some point in the future instead of living it. Karen doesn't say anything, but she grabs me and I let myself think I imagined it. Maybe last night was just a collection of nightmare images, half remembered and faded. And at that moment, I'm just Cassandra Hack, a teenage girl. The woman who acts like my mother isn't trying to protect me from the world's evil by dicing up bullies and serving them on a plastic tray. When Shannon comes home, we sit on the couch and watch a sappy movie. He lets me lean on him and he doesn't seem afraid at all. We're not mortal enemies right now. I'm not an other, and I'm not wrong. My thoughts slow down, quiet, silent, save one sentence. You've come home. Delilah Hack was dead. But death didn't stop her. Maybe my mom was unique. A woman who dug her way out of her own coffin so she could continue what she'd begun in life. Stories about returning from the dead are as old as the human race. Maybe they help people deal with the fear of death, the terror at the thought of rotting and returning to the earth and leaving no proof you ever existed. The Bible says Jesus Christ died for our sins and returned to show his love. What about those who died for their own sins and returned to show their hate? What about the ones who didn't rot and were unable even to move on to hell? Maybe their torment is knowing that despite their best efforts, people still live. Life is still long and hard or short and joyous. Either way, it's dictated by a complex web of desires and needs and thoughts and impulses. The young still believe they're immortal. And death, though it's always lurking nearby, is the furthest thing from their minds. Can't wait for more Hack Slash? Click here to get the comic right now from Amazon, Midtown Comics, or direct from Black Mask. And don't forget to subscribe to the Hack Slash channel so you don't miss a single episode. You can subscribe to all our tube comics right here. Get yourself in some hack slash clothing at the Black Mask store or check out another tube comic. If you dug this, we think you might like Liberator too.